position the central bank might have. It is also important to note that the Brazilian central bank opened a sandbox uh, uh, period now in Brazil where we registered uh, one of our subsidiaries to participate in that. So we are not afraid to engage with regulators or to discuss the topics with regulators. It's just a matter of fact that, well, Brazil is still not regulated in terms of uh, crypto is not regulated in Brazil. And we have to play ball as it is, right? Uh, uh, as one former speaker said, uh, we cannot wait for regulation to come to light before we innovate. Uh, we, I'm a businessman, I'm not a, a lawmaker or, or, or a regulator. So. Uh, and regarding the competition from DM, yeah, that is a very good point. Um, I, I believe that uh, if it fulfills the promise where every other user of a social media can send and receive payments uh, around the world, if that is the case, then we have a very strong competitor in Brazil. But I don't believe that DM will be the same in every jurisdiction they operate. They're a foreign company, uh, foreign uh, companies cannot technically directly own banks or financial institutions in Brazil yet. So that would have to come with a changing regulatory framework in Brazil for, for, for it to be very disruptive in Brazil, right? We're, we're talking about politics from the 50s that we have in Brazil, uh, rules and laws from the 50s when it comes to, to finan financial transactions performed by foreign companies in cross-border payments and etc. cetera. Uh, however, there is another point that is intrinsical to our product. Uh, the BRZ is pegged to the Brazilian real, which means that not only a Brazilian user can have a Brazilian real equivalent balance on ah, a foreign platform, but also a foreign platform can have a Brazilian real balance in Brazil, which is very difficult for foreign companies. They cannot open bank accounts in Brazil, especially if they are crypto companies. So what we have in our technology is a, is a market penetration tool into Brazil, into a 200 million people uh, business environment, right? So, uh, and if TM comes as a basket of hard currencies, such as the, the, the British pound mixed with the dollar or something like that, it still doesn't fulfill the role of being an equivalent to the Brazilian real. Brazilian traders on an exchange or Brazilian users of an of, of a e-wallet, let's say Uphold or, or any other foreign e-wallet, he wants the ability to sleep while he holds balance in a Brazilian real denominated account. Uh, he doesn't want to hold, in that specific case, dollars, pounds, or, or, or Bitcoin even, because he pays his taxes in Brazilian reais and he pays well, everything in Brazil in Brazilian reais. So what we offer is this synthetic mechanism where you can have Brazilian reais outside of a Brazilian environment. And that is the key thing. Uh, thanks. Thanks a lot. Uh, Johannes, maybe you will uh, uh, help us to tackle the question that, uh, to me, I, I review uh, the questions uh, by uh, our attendees, and uh, uh, they are very concerned about uh, uh, the competition, let's say, perspective of uh, uh, the Chinese uh, uh, government stablecoin. To your mind, uh, and there is a, a question, is it too late for the rest of the world uh, to face uh, uh, the China's uh, DCP initiative? Uh, and uh, you can take it from a broader, let's say, perspective on uh, this global competition, also from the technical, let's say, point of view. How uh, uh, similar or different are uh, different initiatives and uh, what do you expect from, from this competition between CBDCs in general? Okay. Um, well, I think most of that question has already been answered by Tiago when he said, uh, what's the difference between CBDCs and what banks are offering right now? I mean, all the digital units which you have in your bank account is practically um, the same, uh, well, not only the digits, but also the functions which you have in your bank account. This is the same service you're going to get with CBDCs. Um, most banks limit the activity to just the opening hours of your bank. In other words, if I do a transaction right now, uh, it will be executed tomorrow in the morning. <laughs> so I don't believe that it will be different with CBDCs because there is no reason why the transaction is withheld already now with being digital already. I mean, there is no cash carrier uh, bringing some Swiss francs from my bank to another bank. So it's all digital. So why is it? Um, um, procrastinated until the next morning. And if there is no technical reason, then it's well, simply a matter of control. And countries and banks, they would not relinquish that control. In other words, 
if there is no difference between CBDCs and current currencies, then um, what exactly is all this uh, nervousness about with um, uh, Chinese digital currency and potential other currencies now in the West? I mean, there has always been a currency war um, going on. At the moment, the USD is simply the dominant currency, uh, thanks to something which goes back into the 17s. But nonetheless, um, there is an opportunity now for China, and let's say a window of opportunity which opens, which is technology based, which allows them to push in the digital um, um, renminbi into their Silk Road project. And although it might not be too different from the um, current technology which is being used for, for um, monetary transactions, the advantage of this combination, Silk Road plus or Belton Road Initiative plus their digital currency, that is the real and the road's danger. I mean, um, China is basically offering inclusion. The West is so far trying to uh, retain their dominance. Um, I think the danger is not technology in that sense. The danger is uh, trying to contain China. So I don't want to make a too deep political statement, but in my opinion, um, it's always problematic if um, um, barriers are erected and if frontiers are, uh, or um, let's say <laughs> battlefronts are made. Uh, and this is exactly what's happening right now. Um, too late to contain a Chinese uh, digital currency. It's never too late. Um, it's just a matter or a question of which steps are taken in order to um, have an equal offering. Uh, thanks. Thank you very much for your uh, view on that. Uh, so uh, the last uh, uh, speaker uh, on our panel, uh, Jason, the uh, question to you, it's uh, uh, becoming more challenging to uh, pick uh, or choose a correct uh, technological platform for, let's say, a newcomer who would want to issue private uh, stable coins. So what are your suggestions to the newcoming projects on uh, the choice of the platform and uh, on uh, the major factors they should uh, consider when they are selecting uh, a platform for the issuance. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, three things, three quick things come to mind. So the, the first obvious ones are, are speed and cost. Um, you know, if, if your use case is payments, Bitcoin probably doesn't make a ton of sense. It would take 10 minutes to clear payment and then you know, also you'd have to wait for multiple blocks to, to sort of be sure it's final. So speed and cost, uh, I'm sure that doesn't surprise anyone. Uh, the second I would point to is this question of a permissioned network versus permissionless. Um, so as I mentioned, Stellar is an open permissionless network. Uh, we believe those are going to be the most powerful in this area, but you should think through which do you want for your case. Um, you know, from our perspective, open permissionless networks are going to be the most powerful because, you know, we've seen from the internet the power of having a common infrastructure that anyone can build on top of. That doesn't mean you shouldn't be able to put certain restrictions and controls around your particular asset, but issuing it onto a common open infrastructure will allow others to innovate and allow you to benefit from those innovations. So that's the second point, permission versus permissionless. And then finally, uh, and this is one I think people don't think about uh, often is I would think about the, the, the so-called consensus mechanism on the network. Um, how, how does that distributed ledger keep every copy of the ledger in sync? Um, I'm sure most of the people watching this have heard of proof of work. That's what Bitcoin uses or, or proof of stake is another example. You know, think about what are the implications of that? You know, in both of those cases, that means uh, anonymous entities are helping secure that network. That may make sense for you, but there are there are other options. I, of course, know the most about Stellar. Stellar uses a novel consensus mechanism called the Stellar Consensus Protocol, where each uh, validator or each node running the Stellar code actually chooses which other nodes to trust um, for the purpose of consensus. So. Um, that, that may not necessarily be better for your use case. I'm just pointing out the, the different ways these consensus mechanisms work can have different implications for the risks you take when you're issuing an asset. So those are the three things I'd point to, you know, speed and cost, permissioned versus permissionless, and finally, how does the consensus mechanism work? 
Thank you. Thank you, Jason. So with that, uh, I uh, believe our panel is closed. Uh, Katya, what are your impressions? I, I think it was really interesting discussion today. We had such different opinions, you know. We had opinions, so uh, there is no future for any uh, uh, coin, a stable coin project, uh, and uh, we just will keep with the existing monetary system. We had a very interesting uh, proposal from the uh, Swiss regulators, well, uh, from National Bank, Thomas, who really believes, uh, you know, there is a future, but it's also important to think about privacy and here in switzerland it's a good news that we're thinking about it when we talk about the uh, this type of uh, projects where actual central bank can have access to all information so there are a lot of different technologies which probably we can use like a, a special signature or zero knowledge yeah i'm really impressed and but still my conclusion is uh, we have the future for uh, private uh, stable coins which should coexist with the central bank digital currencies. And I think the most important to have this type of the discussions where we can hear the industry opinion and also bring this opinion to regulate the attention that the ecosystem can develop somehow organically in this, in this case. So I really appreciate the discussion. I thank you all of our speakers today. Um, I have a very small uh, last remark before maybe, uh, Alex, you conclude and then I will make the closure of the event. Uh, yeah, I can only add uh, to what you told that uh, I uh, became uh, more optimistic <laughs> than before the event regarding uh, the possible impact of uh, CBDCs on uh, uh, private stable coins. No one is afraid. Uh, that makes me less afraid, <laughs> I would say. Uh, so that would be uh, my uh, main uh, uh, impression uh, from uh, uh, our industry panel. Then it will be our uh, optimistic note that uh, we, we see the future for the uh, private stable coins. And uh, I also would like to uh, bring attention to our participants to the fact that at end of October, we will Finally, we decided to hold our um, to host our event, uh, which is the annual conference, 27-28 of uh, October in uh, Rotkreuz, where we also will have the opportunity for people to be online. And uh, please, uh, uh, you know, stay tuned, follow our newsletter. The two questions I think we didn't tackle at the um, discussions we will forward to the regulator and make sure that they answer your questions so please be sure we're not ignoring your uh, participation and uh, now i just think it's time for uh, people in two uh, small locations in geneva in zurich in our uh, lucas copy bank and signum to uh, maybe network a bit this was also re the reason why we brought all these people together and thank you for everything again. Thank you, Nikki, for your support uh, and um, Signum and Dukas uh, Copy Bank uh, teams. And uh, stay healthy. And we see you at our next events. Uh, so follow us on uh, media and uh, uh, subscribe to our newsletter. Thank you very much. I close the official part of our event. Bye, everyone. Thank you very much. Recording stopped.
Are we done? Are we done in here? So if you then release them in the environment, um, yeah, like we the examples please. you mentioned, it, weird things it's can happen to and it can uh, mess up with the biodiversity, basically. So it is a concern, but all the startups have taken care of this that we support. It's really interesting. I'd love to see like a movie about this. It's so apocalyptic. <laughs> yeah. yeah really cool and i think you know in the sense like uh yeah it's just amazing that the technology exists and we as humans are like organisms yeah. cool but i think we have to slowly uh, wrap up i'm sorry guys it's all good. I think um, I'm nearly done. Yeah, I, I know, Emma, you can do this for hours. <laughs> like hours and hours and hours. Yeah, yeah, as you can see some of our previous Twitch streams. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Just me and, uh, and Susa working mm -hmm. on. So I think for the people who um, are interested in uh, this file, uh we will give away this clo file so if you would like to work on it even further uh, then you can do that uh, i think amber you are gonna create a little uh the fabricant x uh, fashion for good uh logo in it on yeah it. branding yeah. yeah branding on it so that will be super cool as well uh and after that we're probably gonna upload it to a trust x and i'll give it to you uh yana and you can uh do a little yeah, giveaway from the uh, uh, from the design. That's really nice. Yeah, looking forward to that. And I think great way to share the message and to get more people wearing digital fashion. Yeah, you love that. It's great. Yeah. Well, it was super nice to um, hop on the line with you for the past two hours and chat about everything, sustainability and digital fashion and basically any topic we have discussed today, kind of as well. Um, yeah, so thank you so much for inviting me. Well, thank yeah, you for being course. here and yeah. like and being with us for two hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I love that. <laughs> it's super nice I to hope, have you and you're always I open to come back. Yeah, I, like also let's let's meet up um as we are so close to each other anyway. that would be amazing you're always welcome yeah. like we have friday drinks here so oh, if nice. you're ever around like yeah. always like from 5 uh from 5 30 onwards we're uh, all hanging out having drinks so we're very welcome yeah, to join you know. one yeah. of our infamous um <laughs> bottles i will um, do that and uh, a big thanks uh, to all our viewers from all around the world from mexico usa to india wherever it's always super cool that you guys are here yeah it's amazing uh, yeah it's insane yeah if you think, yeah. really think about it it's insane but uh yeah hopefully you've learned something and um yeah we're here doing this more often so uh join us and uh, fashion for good will also start a twitch stream like we said in the near future it will be super cool as well That's my area of um <laughs> this, but yeah i hope we do because i think it's a really great way interaction with everyone mm -hmm. thank you um, all yeah amazing people, people say bye thanks.